uh, well, the Welsh tournament was about a week ago, and just kind of doing some recap on the tournament, what happened, uh, what went well, what didn't go well. Ultimately, the the team that won, I think they had a stringer of about 21 pounds, something like that. And where they ended up going basically was kind of like somewhere out here in the middle of the lake. There's kind of a drop off, uh, but there's also a point where the hydrilla doesn't grow. And apparently that was kind of the spot for them. So my original plan here, as you can see, was to kind of run up north, which is what I did early in the morning, saw a lot of bass jumping everywhere, just couldn't get them in the boat. Uh, never did, never did make it over here on this side like I had planned. I did go down and fish down here by the dam or by the power plant a little bit. Um, we also tried to fish, you know, right outside the boat ramp where I had some success and trying to fish out deep. A lot of people kind of went up to this north end and they were trying to fish this area and i don't think anybody really caught a whole lot of anything again this area here that was pretty popular um again you know we got all up in here up into the grass and everything and really what, what i think the difference was and we ended up getting skunked uh, on the tournament me and the my co-angler uh which a lot of guys did i think only maybe three or four guys in the tournament actually caught anything and so um I, you know as i look back at it there's a couple things that you know lessons learned first of all when I fished, pre fished this lake, just to get familiar with it, the temperature was a lot warmer. Uh, the water was almost 70 degrees, and on the day of our tournament, the water was closer to, you know, 50 degrees. And so that is a very different approach. And so what you ended up seeing is more of a winter pattern on this lake, you know, being a power plant lake, the, the lake is typically warmer. But you saw a lot of the, the fish out on shelves and things, you know, say like right over here, if there was kind of a a drop off where it went from real shallow to deep then you know your, your fish were were on that so that was probably one of the things i you know i thought we used a good variety we basically threw everything uh that we had on the boat out there um but i so i mean i think i don't think lure selection was a problem i think it was just simply uh, an issue of location and you know uh, like i said it was a rough, it was a tough day for fishing out there i think people were expecting you know being a power plant lake the lake to be warmer uh we obviously thought you know, with the lake being warm like that, that a lot of the fish were going to be kind of in that pre-spawn, kind of working their way up to the flats. Uh, and, you know, we cruised up into the flats and trolled around up there too and, you know, couldn't see anything. The only thing that even was close to a bite was kind of over in this area up here. I found a spot that's about maybe eight, ten feet deep and it had a bunch of little holes that we were dropping jigs in and I ran a spinner across one and the bass hit the side of it and then kind of scurried back into the grass and I couldn't coax him back out. So, so yeah, so I think that was the kind of the recap and kind of looking back at it was, you know, I think spot selection could have been better. I think the bait selection was pretty good. And, you know, I heard some of the guys too caught, caught on a crankbait and I threw some crankbaits out. You know, I heard they, they caught on this or that or the other, um, a jig or, a jerk bait, what so it was all stuff that that was thrown. I just think the location was was bad. And the other thing that kind of maybe compounded that a little bit was I had a rough morning where my phone uh, I didn't have my phone on me, and then something shorted out or something wasn't grounded properly. So my fish finder in the back wasn't working. So really I had to rely on the trolling motor to look and and really you know being up in the hydrilla and all that you couldn't really see anything. So. Um, I think had I had to do it over again, I probably, well, knowing where some of these guys caught it, but it also kind of makes sense. I think I would have fished this uh, eastern side a little bit more heavily. Uh, and, you know, the other thing that kind of gets you is you'll see people grouped up. You'll see, you know, five, six boats in an area and think, oh, man, they're on them. And it's pretty obvious sitting out there for a while that, you know, a lot of these guys didn't have anything. And... You know, they were just trying to fish a spot all day, hoping to get a, a bite or two. So, uh, like I said, that's kind of the, the breakdown of it. That was kind of, you know, how it went. Unfortunately, I had planned to film some of it and didn't end up having the GoPro on me either. Uh, that's one of the things, you know, on a tournament, if, if you're kind of an angler uh, to get used to is, you know, I got to the ramp like 530 in the morning with this tournament starting at 630 and it's actually kind of challenging i've got lights on the boat i've got one under the console and i've got an led that kind of illuminates the side but i didn't have anything that really illuminated the dock boxes or the 
the storage. So that was interesting. That, that I think kind of threw me off a little bit, trying to get everything ready in the dark, um, trying to get organized. Um, I didn't have a headlamp. I had like a little LED um, lantern. And so that was kind of, that was probably one of the things that caught me the most was just how hard it was to get everything kind of set and ready in the morning without that. Um, but, um, you know, basically I want to move past this. Um, you know, it was a good experience. I, you know, basically I fished the whole time. I think maybe if I wasn't driving to another spot, I, I basically was fishing almost the entire time, uh, that I was out there. So that was good. Uh, you know, lost a couple lures, broke a couple, uh, some rods, you know, so it was, uh, it was accidentally stepping on them, not like out of frustration or anything, but so that was it. So that was Welsh. Um, that was, you know, for middle of January kind of, um, like I said, this was the game plan, and these little green, if you're wondering about that, this is where I either saw some to catch fish or I caught some fish. Um, so these are spots I, I, I thought, you know, especially at the end of the day, go back to the boat ramp, you know, let's go ahead and get some get some bites. And I saw a ton of guys doing the same thing, trolling around over there, and they didn't get anything. So apparently the fish were all kind of huddled up in a spot, and I think another guy caught some up here kind of in this other area. Um, as well. So I think just fishing the points and kind of fishing more of that winter fishing strategy was, was the better way to go. And, and I got a little too hung up on, especially up here when I saw the fish jumping in the morning, I was like, oh man, this is a great spot. Uh, and I probably fished that a little bit longer than I should have. Uh, and then just driving around looking for something to happen. You know, I did try to fish deep and I was pretty close to this area where they caught, caught some of the fish. I just I think it was just so flustered. I didn't think it through and say, like, hey, you know what? They're probably kind of in these transition zones from shallow to deep. And, uh, you know, had I had that, had I had my, you know, uh, sonar working on, you know, that might have made a difference as well. But anyways, I'm going to put that behind me. The next tournament is Quitman. And so I'll focus on that. And we'll see where it goes. So until next time.